We're about to start another hurricane season after the widespread destruction of Hurricane Ida less than nine months ago. In the left side of the house where the attic was, all that roof is gone. We know what to do. Unfortunately, we know that we have to be our own first responders. You know, we've been here for Katrina, Andrew, and never had this kind of devastation. And now new research on the storm shows it could have been much worse if the path were just a few miles different. News and your local weather experts. This is Eye on Hurricanes 2022. We've said time and time again that it only takes one storm. And for many of us, it was Hurricane Ida last year that caused widespread damage. It led to weeks of misery, months of rebuilding, and that still seems never ending. Good evening. Thanks for watching our Eye on Hurricane special. I'm Chris Franklin. Tonight we have updates on the work to rebuild communities. Some new things to help you prepare for this upcoming storm season, plus warnings about one of the deadliest hazards in the aftermath of storms and new research on Ida showing the storm didn't test our defenses the way many believe that it did. First, let's recap our latest season forecast. NOAA is calling for 14 to 21 named storms, six to 10 of those becoming hurricanes and three to six of those becoming major hurricanes, meaning a category three or higher. Colorado State forecast is right around in that same range. And if you think we've seen more storms in recent years, you're right. This is the seventh year in a row for an above average season. We've only had three below average seasons in the past 15 years. Now let's take a step back to focus on last year. August 29th, 2021, it felt like a bad dream. Another major hurricane making landfall along the southeast Louisiana coast exactly 16 years since Hurricane Katrina. But this was a different storm. It was strengthening right up to the point of landfall. It would strike farther west, placing more of southeast Louisiana under the worst part of the storm. And it was slow moving, giving us a longer duration of the strongest winds, surge and rain. 16 hours from the moment of landfall at Fort Fouchon to the time the center passed north of the Mississippi-Louisiana line, the widespread damage was evident. The Bayou and River parishes had been decimated, but Metro New Orleans was okay. Yes, power was out. Yes, trees were down. Roof shingles could be found on the streets, but the city stood. The levees held. We had survived a Category 4. Or did we? I am excited to report that the levees performed beautifully. Our levee protection system is stronger than it's ever been before. We know that it was tested in true fashion when Hurricane Ida came our way. And we were spared. It worked. Now you just heard from local officials speaking on the conditions of the Orleans and Jefferson levees after Hurricane Ida. And while it was fantastic news that the levees held, they may not have really been put to the test. So let's look back at the numbers. The National Hurricane Center released their final report on Hurricane Ida back in early April. They were able to collect data from sources not necessarily available in real time. The average sustained winds across Metro New Orleans, so northern Jefferson, Orleans, western St. Bernard, and northern Plaquemines, generally range from 30 to 70 miles per hour, less than that of a Category 1 hurricane. And there were certainly stronger wind gusts, which can also do damage, but it's the strong sustained winds which do most of the destruction. And that was not felt from Kenner to Old Jefferson, from Mid-City all the way to Violet. So Metro New Orleans did not even experience a hurricane, let alone a Cat 4. So let's look at the storm surge. As Ida came in from the south, winds were building up a surge in the northeastern quadrant of the storm, from Barataria Bay to the Mississippi coast. That high water then made its way up all the small bayous, canals, lakes, and bays, right up to the hurricane risk reduction system, protecting Golden Meadow to La Rose, and then also farther northeast from the West Bank to the metro area, protecting Wagaman, Avondale, West Wego, Estelle, Woodmere, and Bell Chase. Storm surge estimates range from five to eight feet south of Lafitte, and then along the West Bank levees. And yes, they did hold. However, the last image that the Hurricane Center placed in their report was a what if. What if Ida had tracked just 15 miles to the east? 
15 miles is nothing. 15 miles is a wobble, which are nearly impossible to forecast. So now we're threatened by 10 to 12 feet all the way to 13 to 15 feet. Surge models indicate that at that height, the levees would have been overtopped, and that would have been a more accurate test of our levee risk reduction system. Now, according to the Army Corps of Engineers, the system is designed to be overtopped without failing. So why include this hypothetical in their final report? Ken Graham, the director of the National Hurricane Center, explains. With Ida, we moved the storm about 15 miles to the east and to put another five to seven feet of a storm surge on, on the West Bank. So it could have been worse. You really look at these storms, it was a terrible situation, but little wiggles matter. It, it, just because it didn't happen that time doesn't mean it couldn't happen the next time. And that really has to enter into our preparedness. This also reiterates the concept that you cannot compare storms. Because you saw minimal to maybe no impacts from Ida, a borderline Category 5 storm, does not mean you won't see impacts the next time from even a weaker storm. We have looked at a bigger storm and that put more water in areas as well. So small changes can make a big difference. So that, that we got to remember that and, and we look at it for the next season. We look at it for the next storm and you can't compare storms. That's the big takeaway from doing something like that in the modeling. You can't compare storms. They're all different. Forecasts from the computer models and the National Hurricane Center have dramatically improved over the last several years. The intensity forecast still needs some work, but the track forecast is incredible. But even a good forecast doesn't mean all of the impacts are necessarily well predicted. Moving that storm around 15, 20 miles in either direction, out 24 hours, our average error is about 30 miles. So all those are within, within the error. So all of those are good forecasts, but wow, what a difference it makes on the ground. As you get outside of the New Orleans metro and head west to the river and bayou parishes, the hardest hit areas from Hurricane Ida, the damage becomes really unimaginable if you've never seen it before. Some structures, minor damage, others completely destroyed like this structure here. Some have a long ways to go from recovery as we head into the 2022 hurricane season. So you can see there, Fort Fouchon is absolutely in the worst hit right this now. This thing stayed a category four storm going through the Fouch Parish. It was a major hurricane all throughout there. It was definitely a nightmare. Make sure you have those things put together. Make sure you have your food, your water, your medicine, all those things you would need to evacuate, whether you're coming to us or you're going to family and friends. We say it every year, and it's the last thing anyone wants to think about. But another hurricane season is ahead of us, and you must prepare. Coming off last year's damage from Hurricane Ida, you might have to rethink how you make decisions if a hurricane heads your way. That's because thousands are still living in temporary housing. In Lafourche and Terrebonne parishes, around 4,800 families are still living in state or federal temporary housing. That number is around 1,700 for both St. Charles and St. John parishes. And these numbers don't even include those who live in their own personal travel trailers. Recovery from Hurricane Ida has been slow for many people. For some, it's insurance. For others, it's dealing with things like this. It's pouring down rain. And as you do get closer and closer to the hardest hit parishes, the damage becomes extremely evident. And for some locations, it still looks the exact same as it did the day the storm made landfall on August 29th. That was nine months ago. And that means for some people, they're still living in temporary housing or still getting temporary housing. And it's important to know that for this year's hurricane season, if you are in a trailer or something that's not secured like your house, your evacuation and your plans could look a little different. Make sure you have a game plan in the event that you do have a still a blue roof, your house isn't all the way put back together, or if you're in one of these modular FEMA units or a, or a travel trailer through the state's program, what are you coming back to? Is that camper or that mobile home still going to be upright when you come back after a hurricane? And then if it's not, where do you plan on going? With so many people still in temporary housing, your decision to evacuate could have to come earlier and for less severe storms. Earl Use, the director of Terrebonne Parish Emergency Operations Center, he tells us they will tell anyone in these temporary trailers or module homes to evacuate for any named storm. That even includes tropical storms. Hurricane Ida was one of the strongest hurricanes to test the region since 1965. That's when Hurricane Betsy moved through. And officials want to remind you that you should never base your decision to evacuate on your experience from a previous storm. It's best to leave in those catastrophic, you know, a category three, four, especially, you know, what happened with Ida. If that levee would have failed, we would have had five or six feet of water, water in, 
you know, the bottom third of Lafourche Parish, right? Because that levee system would have filled up. Um, it, it's, it's great to think that you have that protection and it's great to know that we have that protection, but it's not a fail safe. It could always breach, something could always happen in those bigger storms, and it's safe to say you probably need to get out. As you get ready for this upcoming hurricane season, it's important to remember that Ida's impacts could determine how you prepare and plan for this upcoming season. And regardless of if you have damage still or if you've recovered completely, it's important to always have that plan. Reporting from Lafouche Parish, Peyton Malone, Eyewitness News. Coming up, we'll have a look at the essential supplies, plus some new items you may want to add to your hurricane kit. The main danger in Ida's aftermath came from portable generators with four deaths and dozens of people rushed to the hospital. We have tips to keep you and your family safe. And as we had to break a test of your storm knowledge, which letter has the most retired hurricane names? We'll have the answer coming up. Your hurricane season game plan must include supplies you'll need in the aftermath of a storm. And in a worst case scenario, those supplies may be all you have for several days. Alexandra Cranford has more. Every year we have to think about hurricane emergency supplies. This year we're going to do something a little different and look at some actual products that you might consider getting or that might just give you ideas as you put your kit together this year. First, we'll take a look at three pre-assembled emergency kits. Then we'll look at three individual items that I think might be handy to have. So first, with any hurricane kit that you make yourself or buy, there are five big things you want to have. Water, food, first aid, light, and a phone charger and a radio would be a nice bonus. So diving into the pre-made kits, first up, the ReadyWise prep kit. This is a big kit, a three-day emergency kit with the five must-haves, even two light sources. There's a lot of varied food with this one, like soups and pastas and oatmeal. There's also a lot of extra stuff that you probably wouldn't need after a hurricane, like things to start a fire and a Mylar emergency blanket. But if you want to be covered and then some, this might be for you. It's $350. Next up, the Preppy Prep Kit. This one is much smaller, concise, not heavy. It's meant for one person, and it's designed to actually fit on your bookshelf before you're using it. It. The food in this one is just a block to point out, literally just a rectangle of calories in the form of a bar. So you may want to supplement with your own food. This kit is $100. You can also, though, add a solar powered phone charger and radio for $45. And finally, the Mimetic Prep Kit. This one comes in a waterproof backpack that doubles as a flotation device. It has some cool things like a solar powered panel to charge a headlamp and phone. And this one also has a few items that you might not need after a hurricane like wool socks and a knit hat and a fire starter. The food is a block with this one too. This one costs $225. Now, all three prep kits do come with water, but not much. So you'd probably still want to have bottled water or recycled milk jugs filled with water, or you can do the old standby. You can fill up your bathtub for a water supply after the storm. That brings me to the next group of products, which I'll call handy to have. And we start with the water bob. Now, this is a big food grade plastic bag. You use the bathtub faucet and you fill it up in the bathtub. And this way, the water stays clean and protected. It's not just sitting out. It's a plus if you have little kids and are worried about a potential drowning hazard with standing water in your tub because this keeps the water contained in the bag and makes it safe. It's $40 online. Speaking of water, the next handy to have item is a filtration water bottle or a water straw. You may have heard of these before. They have really good water filters built in. They started for hikers or travelers so you could drink from mountain streams or even a puddle, but it would also come in handy during 
uh, a water bottle boil water advisory like after Ida. The filters can last up to about five years or more depending on how much you use it. And the ReadyWise and the MyMedic prep kits include one of these, either the bottle or the straw. And a final product that would be handy, handy to have, it's called a four-in-one flashlight. So it's a flashlight, but it's also an AM, FM radio, an alarm, and it's a phone charger too. This one is powered by a hand crank. So you get a huge arm workout using it, but still pretty cool. Of course, you can easily piece together your own kit with foods and items that you pick out. I priced it out for me. Getting supplies for two people would be close to $200. Most of the cost was for foods that I happen to like. After you get all your supplies together, you can store them in a backpack or duffel bag or even an ice chest. You can keep it in a closet until you need to bring it out. If you want more information about these items or emergency kits in general, I have a lot more on my Twitter and Facebook page and at WWLTV.com. Regardless of all the precautions we may take before a big storm hits, we may experience the inconvenience of power loss, and that could last up to a long time, whether a few days or even a few weeks. And that's when a generator comes in handy. But experts say improper generator use can be deadly. According to the Louisiana Department of Health, last year after Hurricane Ida, there were multiple deaths due to improper generator use. When operating a generator, it's important to read the manual before and follow all the safety procedures. Choosing a location is key. Portable generators must be at least 20 feet from a home with the exhaust aimed away from the home because it produces carbon monoxide, also known as the silent killer. According to the Louisiana State Fire Marshal, there are locations you must avoid when operating a generator. Anything that would take that carbon monoxide as it rises and keep it close to the home, you want to avoid putting the generator in those carports, patios, underneath eaves, overhangs and such. Get them completely out into the open and away from the home. If planning on operating any type of generator, have a carbon monoxide alarm. And basically what it does is kind of intoxicates and, and, and paralyzes folks and you don't smell it, you don't see it, it puts you to sleep and the fact that you, you basically die of as, asphyxiation. Wallace also recommends before refueling your generator to wait at least 20 minutes for it to cool down and do not use it in the rain or in wet conditions. Also use the proper cores and electrical components to feed the individual appliances appliances in your home. There are times when people attempt to backfeed a generator into their electrical system. That is a, a code violation and that could cause tremendous problems and even death to the linemen and problems to your home. After Hurricane Ida, automatic standby generators have become popular and Wallace says that there's a backlog on them. If purchasing a standby generator, it is encouraged to have a professional install it. We recommend that you have a licensed installer, a licensed electrical contractor install these generators so that they know what the code says and they know how to install the generators as well as that carbon monoxide detector in the home. And ensure that your generator is being properly maintained, including the oil change frequency. Michelle Morgan, Eyewitness News. We have some new ways for you to stay connected to your local weather experts this storm season. That's all coming up next. Your smartphone is a critical tool for staying connected when storms threaten. We've been reminding you about our free apps for years now. You can watch our live newscast as well as the latest forecast right on the app. This year, we're rolling out new ways to stay connected with us using your smart TVs with the all tropical update streaming on Roku. And you can also text us photos and storm reports. The number you want to save in your contacts is 504-529-4444. If you text the word storm, we'll send a link with the latest updates. You can also share photos and videos of severe weather. Just make sure it is safe where you are before you send them and include some details such as your location. Thanks for watching this year's Eye on Hurricane special and we hope you stay with us all season for information you can trust from your local weather experts. Have a great night.